take a look at how we add name information into Student Manager. I'm going to go up to the Module menu, click, and down to Names, where we can go Add New Name. You could also have used a keyboard shortcut, Alt-A. When I click on Add New Name, it brings up the Add New Name Information screen. This screen will be different for each school depending on which information under preferences was set for your school. I'm going to go ahead and put in the name and notice that the first letter is automatically capitalized. You do not need to hold down the shift key for first and last name. I can also use the tab key to move between fields. So I'm going to go ahead and put the name in and if the name had been a name that's in the system, it would have popped up and warned us. Let's take a look at an example of that. If I try to enter a name that's already in the system, when I move on to the next field, Student Manager will pop up and bring up the potential name that I'm entering. So in this case, I typed in Bill Clinton and it brought up the fact that Bill Clinton's already in the system. At this point you would verify whether it's the same Bill Clinton or a new one that we're entering. So anytime the name you're entering matches a name that's in the system, Student Manager will pop up and ask you to verify whether this is the same person or not. Going back to our first example, I'm entering my information and I can tab down, I could put a title in, and I could enter a firm. Now you'll notice next to the firm is pink brackets. Whenever you see a pink bracket in Student Manager, it means that's a validated field. If I put a name for a firm, which we're going to look at in a different video, that means that if that name isn't there, I have to enter information about that firm. If that firm name exists in our database, then it's going to fill out information for us. I'm going to go down and put in a fake address for myself. And you'll notice it says, don't mail. If this person has requested not to get mailers, we can put a check mark that says, don't mail. That way, when we run reports, we can use that field and make sure people that don't want to get mail don't receive mail. Now you'll notice that city and state are blanked out. All we need to do is put in the email, or excuse me, the zip code, and it'll automatically fill out the city and state for us, and the county, and the area code. So that zip code table is updated on a regular basis by Aceware and included in upgrades. It gives me the ability by default to fill in day and evening phone number, fax pager, and cell. So I'm going to go ahead and click down here. Then I can move down and I can go ahead and put in my email address. Okay. You'll notice there's an exclude field and uh, this exclude field you put a check mark if they've asked not to be included in mass mails. So if I, this person doesn't want to get emails from us, mass mails, we can go ahead and click exclude. And then what that will do is automatically when you do emails out of Student Manager, it will exclude their information. Now a lot of this demographics information right here uh, will be turned on and off depending on preferences set by your program. So the source would be all the different sources, and we have a different video talking about this, where they heard about your program. You may have occupation, what type of uh, job they have, and what type of organization they are. Uh, you may have a language spot, uh, depending if you're ELS, and if you're a membership program, maybe a member number. There's also spots for birth date and gender. Interest codes, uh, which we'll talk about in later on, uh, allows us to tag an interest for what they're interested in. So if they're primarily interested in business, we could tag a business code in there. And to do that, we could go add interest and um, 
uh, let's say the sales for example uh, I could double click on sales click OK and it add sales in there one of the great things about interest codes is every time they take a class when you've set up classes each individual class will have an interest code a tag attached to it when they register for a class that interest code is then added to their interest list within their name information. That way when you're looking at their name information you can see what kind of interests they've had based on the classes they've taken. This can then be used to run reports so let's say you create a new sales class you could say anyone that's had interest in sales classes would then you could run a report and mail them emails. Looking down at the bottom all this bottom bar down at the bottom stays the same in all the different screens of Student Manager. So on the course screen, the name screen, the registration screen. So I can go ahead and click Save. And the basics of this, basics of this name screen have now been saved. If you look at the top here, we, we've been in the main tab and we have other tabs of information. If we look under comments and history, which we'll go into detail later, uh, we can go in and put other information about this student. Uh, there's a content or comments section where we can enter comments about this student. Now one of the interesting things is if we put an exclamation point in this comment box before the comment it will pop up every time you bring up that name so I've put Greg is hard of hearing that way with the exclamation point whenever this name record is brought up it'll remind people with a pop-up box that this person is hard of hearing there's also a special needs box you can put their special needs in and when you run uh, certain reports the special needs will pop up next to their name we have a CRM module and here we talk more of later where you can track contact history and contract contact history and contact types uh, for this user if we look under additional info this is where user defined fields are kept your program may have fields that they need to track for a, a particular name in this case we have spouse and license plate and we can put that information in here. These are defined when your software is set up at the beginning. And finally, a newer part of our software is the credential tracking. We can track the various credentials that a, a name has. Uh, this can also be used for test scores and other information like that. We have a different video that explains this that you can go over to get more details on this. As we finish up with the name screen, let's look at a couple of buttons here. One, we can jump right from the name screen and add registrations. If we were to click the Add Registration button, it would jump to the registration screen and allow us to add a registration. We could also use the Quick Reports button, which allows us to run uh, some quick reports about the student. We could also use the Courses Taken button if we had looked up the student um, and see what courses the student has taken. Since this is a brand new student, we don't get any information and I can use the escape key to escape out of that, that button. The special key is to enter different shortcuts. Uh, this can be set up to do different things, but basically these are shortcut keys to jump to different areas in the system. These can be customized for your program and is, are usually set up when the program is set up. I can hit escape to get out of that box. When we're done entering the name information, we can go ahead and click OK. That's all there is to it. Good luck.